Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Lupfer. I am Director of Humanities Texas. Uh, and before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to our grants team. So I'll start with uh, my colleague, Marco Buenteo. Hi, everybody. Marco Buenteo, Assistant Director of Grants. Uh, Kate? Hi, everyone. Kate Rogers. I'm a grants program officer. And Lucy? Hi, I'm Lucy Ryan. I am a program officer on the grants team. And Bethany? Hi, I'm Bethany Offer. I'm a grants program officer. Uh, so again, uh, everyone, thanks for, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we are, are um, very pleased to, to offer an overview of this, uh, this grants initiative, the special initiative funded through the American Rescue Plan, uh, and, and um, uh, so happy to have you here. So um, Marco, if you'll start the PowerPoint, uh, we'll, we'll get going. So just to, to begin, um, those of you, uh, please, uh, as you have questions, uh, include them in the Q&A um, uh, section here of our, of our webinar. Uh, you can also use the chat section to communicate directly with our team, with uh, Marco and Kate and Lucy and Bethany, if you have questions or um, uh, uh, about the, the administration of this webinar. Um, and they'll respond to you. Uh, but uh, please uh, direct the questions that you have about the grants program to the Q&A um, uh, panel, and we will answer them uh, as we can over the course of the webinar or during our discussion um, uh, closer to the end of uh, this, this session. Um, what we'll do today, I'll give you a brief introduction just to Humanities Texas and what we do. Uh, I'll talk about our regular grants program, uh, and then uh, we will also talk about the Relief Grants Initiative, uh, important dates that are coming up, for deadlines, uh, and then how to stay in touch uh, with questions um, and for other information about Humanities Texas activities statewide. Okay, Marco, next slide. So quickly about Humanities Texas, um, we are the state uh, Humanities Council. Uh, we're a private nonprofit. We're based in Austin, but we have statewide responsibility, statewide service. Um, our board of directors uh, come from um, both academic institutions and from communities around the state. Um, and we are the state affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities. So we're the state affiliate of uh, the federal agency, the NEH. Uh, so the Texas Commission on the Arts is a state agency that is the state affiliate of the National Endowment for the Arts. Humanities Texas, we're a private nonprofit, not a state agency, but we are the state affiliate of NEH. And our mission, um, we've been around for nearly 50 years. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary in 2023 uh, is to promote lifelong learning in the humanities and communities throughout the state. Next slide, Marco. Um, I'll start here with a definition of the humanities and, and I, I hope this doesn't um, sound pedantic, but I think it's helpful to kind of get a sense of the broad, um, uh, the many fields in which we work and the many fields in which um, we provide support. Uh, so, of course, uh, humanities subjects include history, uh, folklore, folk life, cultural traditions, uh, the study of literature, both modern and classical, uh, um, ethics and philosophy, the history and criticism and theory of the arts, um, the actual performance of art or the, the creation of art, creative writing, painting, dance. Uh, that is the province of the Texas Commission on the Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, but, the, but the history and the criticism and theory of the arts, any examination or any program related to cultural traditions as exhibited in art, that's certainly part of the humanities. Um, we also are active in and support programs uh, that draw upon the social sciences, the, 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 quant excuse me, the qualitative uh, aspects of the social sciences, uh, so not quantitative. Um, so we're not making grants or programs in statistics, for example. Um, and, and as I noted, the, the, the humanities do not include the creation or performance of art or creative writing, um, public policy or social services. Next slide, Marco. To pursue our mission, we, um, we have a number of different programs. It, we are more than just a grant making entity. Uh, as some of you know, we run programs for uh, teachers around the state for professional development um, to help teachers expand the, their mastery of the topics they teach like Texas history, like US history, um, English language arts, government. 
Um, we present outstanding teaching awards every year to outstanding K through 12 uh, humanities educators. Um, we have a traveling exhibitions program. So those exhibitions circulate um, throughout the state and nation. Uh, we have a radio program called Texas Originals uh, that chronicles or profiles uh, uh, individuals who've played a significant role in Texas history. We have a family literacy program called Texas Storytime that encourages strong family reading practices. Uh, we have a reading and discussion program for veterans called Veterans Voices. We sponsor public lectures statewide and also hold history harvests. Um, but here our focus will be on our grants program and, and we will um, continue over the course of this webinar to refer both to our regular grants program, which is the, our ongoing grants program, um, which we've been um, administering for, for more than four decades. Uh, and we'll also talk about this special relief initiative that is unique to this fall that is supported um, by the American Rescue Plan. So next slide. So our regular grants program, our ongoing grants program, um, focuses on awarding grants to nonprofit organizations and governmental entities. So we are set up to award grants to public libraries, county historical organizations um, for humanities programs. So these are these are ongoing, what we're calling our regular grants are program grants. They cover program related expenses as opposed to operational expenses. So these are specific to programs, um, but they can support any manner of public humanities program, uh, lectures, panel discussions, public uh, symposia, teacher institutes, reading and film discussion groups, um, exhibitions, both the, the rental of exhibitions and the fabrication of exhibitions, um, media program for television, radio, film, and of course, uh, um, digital programs online. So next slide. So there are two different kinds of these regular grants. Um, we have many grants, which are available year round. Uh, they fund up to $1,500 of costs that are associated with public humanities programs. And we accept many grant applications on a rolling basis throughout the year. We're just accepting many grant applications all the time. Uh, it's a, it, it's, that particular line is, is structured to be accessible, easy to use. The application is four or five pages, uh, and we, we turn decisions around in 10 business days. Um, our major grants are available twice a year. Uh, we have deadlines on September 15th and March 15th every year. These are larger grants. Um, they range often between $1,500 up to say eleven dollars or $12,000. Uh, they're also program grants, but they typically support larger scale public programs. Um, and um, as I say, we award major grants twice a year. Uh, and of course we have a deadline for the fall major grant cycle coming up on September 15th. Um, I wanna emphasize that these regular grants are ongoing. We are not suspending our regular grants program uh, this fall as we award relief grants. So that's why we're gonna be very careful to distinguish um, our regular grants from our relief grants uh, in this session because they do have different guidelines. So next slide. Um, so I'll say a quick word about the, the, the genesis of these relief grants and then I'll pass the baton to Marco. Our 2021 relief grants were made possible by the American Rescue Plan, which was signed into law in March. Uh, we will distribute this fall uh, just over $2.3 million in relief grants. Um, that's quite a, um, it's quite something for us. Uh, our, our annual grants budget is typically around $250,000 a year. Uh, so, so this is a, um, uh, we're thrilled to have this opportunity to provide significant support statewide. Uh, the purpose of these relief grants is to support organizations, cultural and educational organizations, as they respond to and recover from the pandemic. So these are specifically targeting um, pandemic recovery uh, and pandemic response. And so we can talk a little bit about what that means. Um, but I I'm sure that all of you, like us, have learned uh, many lessons over the past year and a half. Certainly, um, our, our staff has become much more adept. Our programming has become, we, we now have a wide range of, of digital programs, remote programs that we've been offering. Uh, and those are not programs that we had ever offered prior to the pandemic. So they're, they're, um, they're lessons that we've learned and, and we expect to continue those programs moving forward. Um, that kind of change, that transition in your local programming is the kind of thing that one of these relief grants can support. Um, we, this is the second round of pandemic-related grants that we have provided. 
Uh, the first was for the CARES Act. Um, that was last year. Some of you may remember and may even have re uh, received um, uh, one of the 198 um, relief grants that we awarded last year. Uh, so I'll pass uh, the, the baton over to Marco, who will talk in greater detail about these relief grants. Thank you, Eric. Now, before I begin, I'd just like to reiterate that this, this, grants, this grants program is really important to us. This is a significant amount of funds, and we really see it as our mission, not just to tell you about the application, to put forward the application, but to help you along in the process. At the end of the presentation, we'll give you all our contact information so you can get started. Um, and please reach out to us. We are eager to help. We are eager to get these funds out and help all our organizations in Texas recover from the pandemic. So I'll switch off my video here so we can focus on the, the presentation. So I'll start with eligibility. To be eligible, organizations must be based in Texas be public accredited nonprofits with tax exempt status from the IRS. Now this can also include institutions of higher education, local and state entities, and federally recognized native tribal governments. Uh, part of this grant program, um, NEH requires DUNS numbers this time around. Uh, we do understand that it can take a few days to acquire a DUNS number. So if your organization does not have one, we highly encourage you to get started um, as I said, that is a requirement in this program. And another uh, criteria here is that organizations must provide public humanities programming. This will really uh, detail what your organization can uh, apply for, and I'll get into that soon, uh, but that is a really important part of this, of this uh, grant program, a criteria. So quickly, who is not eligible for a 2021 relief grant? individuals, for-profit organizations, political or advocacy organizations, and organizations not based in Texas. So getting back to that uh, humanities public programming uh, part of the, of the requirements here, uh, what you're allowed to request depends on your organization's mission and activities. The key question is, uh, does your, human, does your organization uh, have humanities research, programming, or education as a central part of their mission? So I'll get into what that would mean for humanities-focused organizations and for organizations that perhaps don't already provide public humanities programming or who intend to, with these funds, carry out humanities programming. So for humanities focused organizations, again, these are organizations that can answer that question that they do currently provide or they have historically provided public humanities programs. They can request any one of these allowable costs, uh, multiple or just one. So we really want the 2021 relief grant to help with general, general operating costs for your organization. This can cover rent, utilities, and especially payroll if you are retaining staff, if you are creating new staff, if you have new programs that came about as part of the pandemic and you want to staff those programs, you can request payroll for part-time, full-time staff or consultants. Another initiative that the NEH wants to provide with, these, with this funding is the, the ability to request funding for strategic planning or capacity building efforts related to responding and recovering from the pandemic. So for example, if your organization is planning on reopening or you're planning on how to continue your operations while remaining closed, you could apply for funding to help you with that, with that planning process. This can also cover technical con and consultant needs related to a digital transition or in support of preservation and access programs. As an example, if your organization has a in-person or in-office presence that you want to transition to a digital presence, be it through digital programs or a website, you could apply for funds through this grant program for those purposes. Semi-relatedly, uh, an expansion to outdoor and virtual programs from a traditional setting is also available. 
If you have public in-person programs that you want to take online, you can do that with this funding. If you have current online programs that you would like to expand, you want to reach new audiences, you can also do that with this funding. Other allowable costs for humanities-focused organizations are equity assessments and planning, planning related to the pandemic or the economic crisis. And of course, you can apply for programming costs for current or new public humanities programs developed in response to the pandemic. So like we said before, this is a really great opportunity, includes a lot of allowable costs. And if you have any questions whatsoever, we'd be happy to help. Allowable costs for, for organizations that are not humanities focused, that is organizations that have not historically provided public humanities programs. Uh, all of this funding is related to programming. The NEH still wants to help organizations that carry out humanities programs, but if they're not traditionally a humanities focused organization, they can use these funds to do any number of things uh, within these allowable costs. So for example, they could expand um, traditional programs to outdoor or virtual programs with this funding. They could also complete equity and diversity assessments of their programs with this funding. So for example, if you're an arts organization with a program on tra traditional Texas music and you want to expand your content to include Indigenous, indigenous music, for example, you could do that with, with this funding. And as stated earlier, this funding can also allow for the funding of new programs or current programs developed as a, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, this can be in-person, virtual, digital programs. So in this section, we'd really like to dig into some of the key elements of the application and with some of this information, hopefully help you make your case. Uh, one of the key elements at the start of the application is your mission. We ask your organization's mission and we ask that you explain how the humanities uh, factor into your work. For a library, for example, this may be as simple as saying, we provide reading and learning opportunities for our community. Another key element of the application is describing your humanities programming. So we ask that you describe your most significant public humanities programs and how those pro programs serve public Texas audiences. Again, this is a key part of the application. And if you cannot demonstrate that public humanities programming is a part of your work, we please ask that you contact us before you submit an application. Again, if your, if your organization doesn't traditionally provide public humanities programs, but you would like to with these funds, here's where we would ask that you describe that. So other key elements of the application, we really wanna see um, the audiences that you serve. We'll ask for estimates of pre-pandemic audience numbers. We'll also ask for 2020 numbers, whether they be virtual or in person. We ask that you describe the audiences that you serve, as well as any recent efforts to reach new audiences. There is no perfect application. And here we ask that you answer to the best of your ability. If, for example, you had great audience numbers before, but the pandemic brought you down to zero, we want to hear that. We want to know that information and see that these funds could really help out your organization. If you had a digital program with a great audience that wasn't affected by the pandemic, but you wanna reach new audiences with that program, the application can also capture that information. Of course, a key element of the application would also be the, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We would ask you to specify how the pandemic has affected your organization. If you suffered loss of revenue, loss of staff, if you have difficulty paying rent, or an inability to serve your target audience. We also ask if you're at risk of closure, what your current status is as far as you're open or temporarily closed, um, and how your programming has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
related to that, we want to see what impact the relief grants would have on your organization, on your operations, on your programming. This would be different than what you request funding for in the budget. Here we ask for a narrative answer on how you think these funds are going to help your organization. What significance will they have on your operating capacity and what significance will they have on your programs and your ability to reach the audiences that you want to reach? Of course, we have a budget section where we ask that you include a line for every budget item that you're requesting funds for and a justification for each item. For example, you could be requesting funds for a program coordinator. You'll, you'll include that in the personnel section and include the funds that you would pay the, the program coordinator or director. Um, you could ask for funds for promotion, supplies, and any other category that falls within those allowable costs. Other important elements of the application would be a letter confirming your nonprofit status. We do ask that you submit a W-9. Again, the NEH requires DUNS numbers. And really, if you want to include optional letters of support, you can do that with the online application. So these are the, the funding amounts that are, that are allowed with the application. We have tiers. We have two tiers, and they're determined by your fiscal year 2020 annual operating budget. If you, have, if you had an annual operating budget under $2 million, you would be considered a tier one organization, and you could apply for a maximum of $12,000. If you had an annual operating budget of $2 million or more, you would be considered a tier two organization, and you could apply for a maximum of $20,000. We will be providing this presentation to you in PDF form and, and PowerPoint form after the presentation. So don't worry about writing any of this information down. So I've discussed some of the, the key elements of the application. Um, and now I'd like to discuss the review criteria that our, that our Humanities Texas Review Committee will have in assessing these applications. So they will prioritize awarding grants to organizations that administer humanities programs, like we've said, and, and that those programs have an impact in Texas communities. Again, we want to see organizations demonstrate great immediate and or ongoing need as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Another important criteria is demonstrating how the relief grant funds will impact the organization, how it will help them respond and recover from the pandemic. Along with that essential criteria, the Humanities Texas Review Committee will give special consideration to organizations that are in traditionally underserved areas of the state, organizations that have not been consistently served by Humanities Texas or the NEH. And we also want to give special considerations to organizations with limited funding and or limited staff. Along with this, we do have a mandate for a statewide reach. We want to reach all parts of the state and help all sizes of organizations. So we especially encourage small and rural organizations to apply to this 2021 relief grant. If you do not see your organization reflected in this special consideration, but you have need, we definitely still encourage you to apply. So this is our current timeline for this grant program. The applications opened on August 1st. They will close on September 3rd. The review committee will be making reviews and decisions in October and November. And we hope to notify all applicants of the award decision on the week of November 8th. So now we'd like to open it up to questions. I see that we'd have a couple of questions in the Q&A section and chats in the chat section. Hi, Marco. So our first question comes from Lene. She's asking a question about qualification. So she says our agency hosts an annual film and art festival called Real Abilities. It was created to celebrate the lives, stories, and talents of people with disabilities. 
They have free film public screenings, uh, talkbacks follow this, they go into schools with film and speakers and go into local companies to educate them. Um, during this past year, they transitioned to being online and they would like to plan for hybrid next year. They're wondering if they qualify for this grant. Yeah, well, it would really depend on, on the specific request, um, the funding for the program. Um, we have covered film festivals before and art festivals. Um, we often see from, from our festival uh, applicants a, an educational component, for example, they can have panel discussions, Q&As, or lectures and presentations about the topics being covered. Um, it generally sounds like they would be eligible, and I would invite them to, to carry on the conversation with us. Yeah, and I, I would add that that it's a it's it's important to emphasize that um, these grants are for projects that draw upon the humanities, uh, and so so I think Lene, one of the key elements of your application is showing how um, your programming, either in the talkbacks or in the selection of film, how uh, you're ultimately pursuing a mission that includes it doesn't necessarily have to be exclusively, um, but how it includes. Um, uh, providing educational opportunities, drawing upon the humanities. Are, are you talking about ethical concerns or uh, historical questions in addition to um, uh, some of the other topics that you're addressing? Okay, our next question is asking whether funding can be used for operational costs associated with a city owned museum and in relation to that, um, if someone has applied for a grant funding in support of strategic planning consulting fees, should they include that in their request or keep that out? Okay, so I, I believe that sounded like pre-award costs. Um, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you had costs that go back to March 15th or later, you could apply to get those funds covered through this grant. Um, it can cover strategic planning and capacity building. And a city-owned museum would be eligible to apply. Again, I, I, making sure to, to point out that, or, or to emphasize that um, uh, the museum ha is is active in the humanities. Uh, and I think um, Bridges' question about the um, strategic planning. Uh, if, if you have already included that request to another organization, I would advise keeping that out of your request to Humanities Texas uh, and seeking support for other eligible costs. Um, but um, we do, we, we understand that grants uh, are given and, and, are, and are used in the real world. And so if you were, let's say you received a Humanities Texas grant, but the other grant that you didn't apply for, um, uh, um, the other grant that you applied for didn't come through, you can always talk with our staff after a Humanities Texas Texas grant was awarded to uh, revise your budget. But I believe, Marco, it, the NEH guidelines do indicate that applicants can't apply for costs that are also included in requests to other entities. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Another question is, um, if funds are awarded, do they have to be spent within a certain time frame? Yes. So the, the latest uh, grant period end date that we can offer is December 2022. All funds would have to be expend, expended within that time frame. Great. Another question is, as a city library, we do not have nonprofit status. May we provide the W-9 instead of the letter from the IRS? Or can the Friends of the Library, since they are asserted as a 501c3, do they qualify as they provide support and funding for their programs? Eric, is, are there other forms that we allow for organizations that are nonprofits but do not have the specific tax exempt form? We would have to check with NEH about um, about those guidelines, but but Judy, I would um, uh, the the Friends group does qualify. Um, uh, so they um, they could apply on your 
behalf, given that they they support the activities of the library. Um, but uh, we've actually um, we've had some. Um, th this has been the the question that you ask about nonprofit status has been a bit of a moving target with NEH over the past couple of weeks in terms of eligibility for these relief grants. Um, but I would encourage you to to um, if you'd like to pursue that question further, just to set up a time to talk with our staff um, to to drill down and really. Um, uh, we can go to NEH and ask on your behalf. We'd be e eager to work with you on that. Our next question is from Nicole. She has questions about the letters of support. She is wondering how much weight is given to the letters and are they suggested? We do recommend including any and all information that will that will give us details on how you were affected by the pandemic. If, if those letters of support, for example, state that the organization is a boon to the community. It's from a community member and they're supporting your organization. That would, I think, would look really good on an application. They're not mandatory, but our review committee would like to see letters of support that show support for the organization that show that the organization has impact in the community. Our next question is from Richard. He's asking if they are the humanities division within a larger institution like a university, is their annual budget that of the division or that of the university? Yeah, we wanna see the operating budget for the division. Um, and we'd also ask if the division is able to apply themselves. If not, they may have to apply through the university OSP. Um, but I would like to continue that conversation um, with them if they have any questions about the application. We also have a question from Michelle. Um, she is involved with an annual conference. It involves author panels, discussion of why in children's literature, expanding access to books and reading, other related topics. Um, they had to cancel their in-person conference and held it virtually, and they'll have a hybrid in 2022. Um, they're wondering what types of funding they could apply for. Yeah, Michelle, I would encourage you to set up a, um, a, a individual Zoom meeting or or one on one a phone call with a member of our staff. Um, I think uh, Kate or Bethany or Lucy has put the link to um, that registration uh, page in the chat here. Um, but um, but yeah, I think that we could we could talk with you about the different options that you have available to you because I think it is it's worth thinking through. Um, whether you should apply for a regular grant or a relief grant given um, your plans. I thought that there was an interesting question um, that we that's marked as answered, but I think it's worth just um, uh, considering it here in the discussion. Marco, I'll read it to you. Um, yeah. Uh, it is a new pop-up museum exhibit an eligible project. This will assist the museum in bringing the public back after a long year of closing. And Lucy has, has answered it. She, an exhibit would be an el eligible project to request funds for as long as it's tied to the humanities. Um, but we also recommend using the opportunity to apply for operational funds and apply to our regular grant lines for program specific requests. Um, but I, Marco, would you just say a word about um, tying requests back to the pandemic? I mean, I think this the, the idea of for a, a museum to sort of develop a creative pop-up exhibition to sort of bring audiences back sounds like a great request. Yeah, yeah, that seems to fit really the line that, that NEH wants uh, organizations to follow with this grant opportunity. So if you can really tie the need back to the COVID pandemic, the 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 impact that you think you'll have as a result of being closed, that you could have, you could bring in new audiences with this pop-up project, um, then we would definitely recommend that you apply for the relief grant. Especially, and, and maybe you're serving new audiences now, maybe in the last year and a half, you've found that there are other audiences that your institution can serve that it wasn't previously. I think it's important to note that in your application to really show the review committee um, uh, your plans to, to uh, re-engage your, your um, traditional audiences and also maybe any new audiences that you've begun serving in the past year and a half. Great. 
Great, Bethany. Um, would that be all the all the typed questions in the Q and A and in the chat? It is yes. If if anyone has a question that they would like to voice, we could also um, you could hit the raise hand feature and 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 speak your question if you would like, or otherwise. We'll take a few more minutes to accept questions in the Q and A and in the chat. Okay, looks like we do have someone raised their hand here. One second. Rebecca Barrera, I I should have allowed you to to talk. One second. There you are. All right. Hi, Ma Marco. Glad to meet you. So I was wondering if printing and publishing of, of materials can be covered under these uh, guidelines. Uh, they are cultural materials. They're uh, history, folklore, Latino cultural stories, all of that. But is printing part of, can, be, can that be included? We have, before, we have not allowed publishing of, of materials, but be it books, um, uh, media materials. Um, Eric, would you have any more context about this question? Yeah, uh, Rebecca, thank you for the question. Um, I, it, Marco's right that we're not able to support through either our regular program or the relief program, just publishing initiatives that are publishing initiatives with no pro that, that are not right. um, published within the context of larger programs. But if, if you if your organization is, say, a museum that is that is offering public programs that that um, either digitally or in person bring people together and the print materials support those programs, then it's absolutely eligible. That's exactly what I meant. We, we're creating cultura kits that are used in an educational strategy, but that's the main core. The curriculum is the main core of what we're distributing to everyone during the workshops. Yeah, so, then okay. I, yeah, then I would absolutely encourage you to apply and to make that case in the application that describe the overall program and how the print materials support the overall mission of the program. We have another question in the Q&A from Judy. They're wondering if their organization can be reimbursed for programs provided in response to the pandemic, or does this need to be future programs? Yeah, so um, again, if you have costs uh, dating from March 15th, 2021 to uh, December 2022, which would be the, the latest grant period allowed within the grant program, any costs within that time frame would be allowed so if you were already responding to the pandemic, um, you can apply for funds to cover that. Yeah, we're incredibly uh, grateful to NEH for giving us that flexibility with this because we know that so many of you are struggling with uh, costs that you've already encumbered. Um, and so, yeah, so this is not just about future costs. Um, they're, they're, we can go back to March 15th, as Marco said. I would encourage you all to, to, um, to talk with our staff. Um, uh, we've got a great grants team here uh, and, and I'll, I'll reiterate what Marco said. We're, we're, our, our mission here, our, our intention, our, our hope is that, that we can uh, support um, uh, humanities programs statewide, um, the good work that you're all doing. Uh, if you have questions about sort of big picture questions, whether or not you're active in the humanities um, or small um, uh, detail questions about whether particular costs um, are eligible, um, I encourage you to, to be in touch, set up a time, uh, 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 either a Zoom call or a phone call with a member of our staff. Um, and we also know that I mean, it's a one question that often bubbles up is that distinction between the arts and the humanities, uh, the line that that um, you know the, the the because there is the commission on the arts and there's humanities Texas. We're certainly aware that many of you are active both in the arts and in the humanities, uh, and that it and, and that's many of your programs are both arts programs and humanities programs simultaneously. Uh, so, so if you have questions around that topic, around you know sort of whether you know how to frame your request so it's competitive with Humanities Texas, I would encourage you to talk with our our grants team about that as well. Thanks for that information, Eric. And I'll just 
I'll post this next uh, slide here. And, and like I said earlier, we will provide you this PowerPoint presentation as long with, as, uh, along with a PDF that you can use. Um, we have uh, four webinars. We've already uh, completed two now. Um, there's another one next week and another one uh, on August 24th. Um, and you can register for that if you'd like to attend again. You can schedule uh, phone consultations with us by using this link. And you can schedule Zoom meetings with us. Um, Zoom meetings can be um, requested if you're in the middle of the application and you you have a question, you're having technical difficulties, um, or you just want to chat about the organization's plans and how to best relate that, relate that into the application, you can do that uh, via Zoom or via phone. Um, we would definitely recommend that you use these, these, uh, these reservation uh, links here because they would allow us to really give you the full time and attention um, that you would deserve in applying for this application. These are other links here. Um, please check out our website. Please check out the relief grant uh, webpage. If you have questions about our regular grants, we would ask that you um, email us at grants at humanitiestexas.org. If you have questions about the relief grant in particular, please email us at relief at humanitiestexas.org. And as I said, the application launched on August 1st. It is available here, um, and we really hope that you'll apply. And we have uh, we're continuing with our our, um, our other programs this fall. So I, if you don't currently receive the Humanities Texas e newsletter, um, uh, I encourage you to sign up. Um, and uh, and that that's an, that includes announcements about our teacher programs, about new exhibitions, about public lectures that we're holding uh, virtually as well as um, in person. Although right now um, this fall we are we are so far only planned virtual programs. Um, but of course, any other information you'd like about our program, please be in touch. And we sure appreciate your time this afternoon. I see Kate has just dropped um, our e-newsletter sign up into the chat. So that's available there. Um, any other questions? Um, well, thank you all. I appreciate y'all attending. Uh, and uh, I hope you'll be in touch about this opportunity. It's, it's as I say, we are thrilled to, to have this chance to support the work of, of um, humanities organizations statewide.